Is our bathroom too noisy?
Uh, hello, everyone. I uh, will start in a few more minutes. Uh, hi everyone, uh, very good evening. Hope you all are doing well. Welcome to September edition of Mobi Talk, uh, meetup for mobile, uh, app, hi everyone. Uh, mobile app developers. Hope you all are doing well. Welcome to September edition of Mobi Talk, uh, meetup for mobile app, mobile app developers. So you can follow us on uh, Mobi Talk WhatsApp through this link. Also, you can follow us on Twitter. Uh, this is the first time we are uh, so we con conducting this on, uh, meetup on uh, YouTube Live. So you can give us your feedback uh, at the later uh, after the session. Conducting this meetup on YouTube Live. So you can give us your feedback at the later after the session. So topic for today is about uh, making apps smarter with machine learning. Uh, so today, uh, Irdaya and Sajid will cover, uh, give a brief intro to ML and cover the features of core ML and they'll build an image classifier app using core ML. Irdaya will, uh, will cover ML kit and building an OCR app using the ML kit on Android side. So over to Irdaya and Sanjit. 
Um, hello, everyone. Thanks for uh, joining with us today. So today will be uh, me and my co-presenter, Sanjit, will be leading you guys on how to make your mobile apps smarter with uh, machine learning. So Akash has already gone through the agenda today. <coughs> I'll start off with the uh, brief introduction to machine learning. Um, so I hope like I don't have to repeat the agenda. So I guess we can just get started. And uh, before uh, I want to continue, um, <clears throat> could you guys please uh, visit menti.com and use this code uh, <clears throat> and uh, answer a quick poll over there. In the meantime, I'll just give a few more seconds for people to vote in, and then I'll just continue. Yeah, th thanks for thanks for the poll uh, for taking the poll, guys. So as we were able to see, uh, <clears throat> uh, half of the population was uh, unclear about what machine learning is, and half of them uh, <clears throat> were uh, in the intermediate levels. So before I start, I would like to uh, share this meme I saw a long back. Uh, so uh, this is the one that I'm talking about. <coughs> As you can see here, this is how a general, uh, this is how the general population uh, react uh, whenever they hear the word uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning. Uh, but ac actually, like the right hand side is the reality happening. But it's n just not about the community that is outside of this outside um, of this technology world. Even the community, most of the population within the community, <coughs> is unsure about. Uh, artificial intelligence, they all consider it to be a kind of black magic that things just happen um, just like that. Um, 
So as, as human beings, we are still trying to understand uh, the people next to us. Uh, and we have been trying it over for centuries and we are yet to figure out um, what the reality is. Um, and that's what we are trying to do with artificial intelligence and machine learning to these computers. We are trying to feed them the information and algorithms to make sure they understand and see and understand the world like the way that a normal human would do. <clears throat> so uh, according to this uh, image that I'm sharing with you guys right now, if AI turns bad, as people say, tomorrow, it's up to us. We are the ones that are feeding them um, our brutal thoughts, and we are bringing the wrath upon the world by ourselves. Uh, so yeah, just, just kidding. Uh, so let me move on to the next slide. <clears throat> so whenever you hear uh, either of these words, you will automatically end up hearing the other two. Uh, so these, these things are actually interconnected, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. They are, actu they are actually interconnected between them. So let me just explain what each corresponds to. <clears throat> so when we are talking about artificial intelligence, it is the science that uh, enables or even empowers the machines to mimic human intelligence, such as uh, decision taking or speech recognition and so on, whatever the humans would do. And AI is actually the big picture here. It's the big umbrella under which all these subfields come in. As you can see in the diagram, um, there is robotics, there is vision, machine learning, natural language processing. These are the subfields of artificial intelligence. They all fall under the big umbrella of artificial intelligence. <clears throat> and now let's move on to what is machine learning. Machine learning uh, is actually a subfield of artificial intelligence, uh, which enables the machines to improve a given task uh, with experience. So before I move on to the flow diagram, um, consider this scenario. Uh, I give a five-year-old kid uh, two photographs of uh, different dog breeds, saying uh, I give them uh, a German Shepherd photo and a Rottweiler photo. Uh, and I explain to him, like, this is German Shepherd and this is Rottweiler. What are the odds? And the odds of him, find if I give him another photo and ask him to differentiate between the, those dog breeds, the odds of him finding the dog breed or classifying the dog breed is practically zero to very low. And now consider I give him 10 different photos of German Shepherds and Rottweilers. And I also explain him clearly like how to differentiate between these two dog breeds. And the odds of him differentiating or classifying those dog breeds increases. Uh, this, this is exactly what machine learning is trying to do to the computers and machines here. So now moving on to the flow diagram, the kid here is actually the machine learning model. And the way I explain him to differentiate between these dog breeds is the machine learning algorithm that I'm feeding him or the machine. And the photos that I give him are practically the training data over here. And once I train him com completely, I'll, to evaluate him whether he's able to classify these dog breeds properly, I'll supply him few other few uh, real life input examples and I would evaluate him. And if he is able to perfectly classify these dog breeds, the evaluation is successful. And the, the model, which is actually the, considering our scenario, the kid, he is ready to classify uh, the dog breeds. If he is not, if he is still unclear about certain aspects of these, of classifying these dog breeds, what I have to do is I have to repeat this process again. I have to supply him more training data, um, change my algorithm, which is the way he, uh, way I'm making, make, I'm explaining him to understand this uh, classification. And I have to train him again, and then I have to evaluate again. So this process keeps, uh, uh, is recursive until, he, until the model is perfect and ready to be deployed. So this is what machine learning is. So now let's move on to deep learning. Um, deep learning is, uh, is, people say deep learning is a subfield of machine learning, but uh, I would consider deep learning a specialized field of machine learning which relies on vast amount of data. And uh, these artificial neural networks built inside our deep learning, they adapt to a hierarchical learning structure um, so, such that they become more advanced um, forms of machine learning models. So these artificial neural networks that are constructed within the, these deep learning models are actually uh, inspired from human brains. So consider this example. We are, give, we are new to shapes and uh, we are given uh, 10 uh, different uh, pictures of different shapes, and uh, they ask us to find which is a square. So how a human brain would work in this case, uh, we think hierarchically, actually. 
So first we will try to figure out which shape has four sides over there. And then we try to figure out the whether the shapes or uh, whether the lines, uh, the four lines are interconnected. And even if they are interconnected, there are lots of correlators. So we have to figure out if all the sides are equal. So this is what deep learning is about. They adapt to a hierarchical learning structure. So what is the difference between machine learning and deep learning? In machine learning, feature extraction, which is the features uh, are extracted separately, feeded as uh, via the algorithm, and then the classification takes place. But when it comes to deep learning, the feature extraction and classification is being understa understood by the model when it is trying to ever train with the particular with the data sets. So uh, this next image explains you the interconnection between artificial intelligence, machine learning, and uh, deep learning. As you can see, artificial intelligence uh, is the big picture here. And uh, the subfield of artificial intelligence is machine learning. And the subset of machine, uh, of machine learning, or as I consider, the specialized field of machine learning is uh, deep learning. So when we are talking about uh, training these models, uh, there has to be methods to train these models, exactly. So these are the most commonly used learning methods when it comes to machine learning. Uh, let me just quickly explain you how uh, each model is being used. Um, so this is supervised learning. <clears throat> supervised learning is uh, where the data sets that we supply to the machine learning models are labeled actually. So uh, consider I'm like, I'm, uh, the previous example that I was mentioning, uh, there are like, I'm going to write a machine learning model uh, where the algorithm will determine uh, whether the given picture or the given dog breed is German Shepherd or Rottweiler. The data set that I'm supplying to the machine learning model will be um, labeled here. So the model will know from the training set and it will know what to expect, what, what the, the output to expect uh, from the data set. So this is supervised learning. So I hope that clears out what unsupervised learning is. When it comes to unsupervised learning, the data set that we are supplying to the machine learning model uh, is unlabeled, actually. So when it is unlabeled, what the developer has to do is he has to improve his algorithm in such a way that the algorithm is able to differentiate the data set that is being supplied to it and cluster them into groups without even knowing the labels just by the features that are extracted from those data sets. So as you can see in this example here, um, these image, the machine learning algorithm will cluster these images separately, uh, saying cluster one will have all the German Shepherd photos and cluster two will have all the Rottweiler photos. Uh, so why in a world where supervised learning is available, why would someone adapt for unsupervised learning? When talking about the practical aspects of business, the data sets that are labeled that can be used for supervised learning are a bit costlier consider, consider to the data sets that are unlabeled. So the developers and the companies Instead of spending money on getting labeled data sets, they, the developers tend to work on the algorithms and make them better to learn from unsupervised learning models, which is unlabeled data sets. And uh, I don't have a pictorial representation for uh, what is semi-supervised learning, but I hope the name is self-sufficient. Semi-supervised learning is uh, where uh, uh, a small data set is labeled and it is fed to the algorithm. It is trained over that small data set and uh, made sure it understands and uh, it is able to extract the features and it is able to classify them. And then this, un this unlabeled whole data set is used to train. So it is kind of a win-win situation for the uh, developers. And let's move on to reinforcement learning. So reinforcement learning is where an agent performs an action and expects a reward from the, uh, uh, expects a reward as the output. And based on the reward, it takes the next actions. So consider here in the image on the left-hand side, the dog acts as an agent here, which is the machine learning model here. It is performing some action on the environment, which is the person that is fitting him. And he gets some reward in return. And he understands, OK, this action is um, OK enough to perform on this environment, so I get a good reward. It observes uh, that particular thing, as you can see in the uh, image on the right-hand side as well. It moves towards the fires, understands it is bad, it gets minus 50 points over there, and, may, and uh, understands that it has to like avoid it the next time. So this is all about uh, reinforcement learning and uh, the basic concepts of machine learning and stuff. So before I uh, <coughs> conclude or uh, wrap up my introduction, I would like to uh, uh, 
take this opportunity to uh, tell you guys about this new initiative here at PayPal, which is Justice by Design. Uh, Justice by Design inspires uh, to design inclusive products that uh, builds and promotes equity, justice, and uh, drive economic opportunity for all, irrespective of uh, uh, races or racism currently, actually. So currently, considering the recent acts of violence uh, uh, corresponding to racism, uh, Justice by Design is focused on designing products that can help uh, eliminate misinformed biases and drive justice uh, irrespective of uh, uh, people using the products irrespective of their race. So these are a few of the examples uh, that we see, a few of the everyday experiences that bias, uh, 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 like these are some of the machine learning examples that bias based, that are bias based on racism. So as you can see, a study has found out that self-driving cars are more likely to drive into black pedestrians. It is because uh, the data set that is being fed there is unable to uh, detect people when it is black. And as you can see, uh, the image on the left-hand side, the facial recognition software is unable to read that particular uh, researcher's face. So he had to wear a white mask uh, uh, during the study uh, to ensure uh, that his uh, uh, model is working fine. So there are like companies, uh, there are companies like this that uh, build products, design products uh, with uh, such implicit and explicit biases, uh, not considering uh, um, these aspects. But uh, and companies like PayPal, few other companies, and especially like PayPal, they use machine learning and these advanced fields of sciences to uh, uh, analyze uh, the data, finance data, and provide a better product to the people. So these advanced field of sciences are actually built to make our lives better uh, if they are used in the right direction and for right purposes. So I would like to wrap up my con uh, introduction with this and uh, over to you, Sanjit. Yeah, thank you, Udaya. So I will quickly share my screen. Yeah, hope my screen is visible. Great, let's jump into machine learning on iOS. Yeah, so I'm Sanjit, I'm an iOS developer at PayPal, so I'll be explaining you about machine learning in iOS. So the topic we are going to um, cover or what is CreateML and uh, how are we going to build a um, image classifier model using this software called CreateML and what is Core ML and, um, and we'll be building an iOS app using this Core ML framework using the image classifier model that we created before. So the workflow is pretty simple. So you have raw data. You feed this raw data inside a CreateML software. And this software automatically converts this raw data into a machine learning model. And this machine learning model is a type of file. Um, and you drag and drop this file in, inside your Xcode project, and you build your application. So this is a. Um, common workflow of uh, machine learning in iOS. So now let's see about what CreateML is. So as I told you, CreateML is a software that is shipped along with your Xcode. It's a, um, it's a framework um, as well. Um, and uh, this CreateML helps you to create uh, machine learning models um, from a raw data sets. And this CreateML has machine learning algorithms packed to it. And all the algorithms are more or less supervised learning algorithms. So if you dig deep and see how, how they work is, so you have a raw data and you train that data and you keep on training for certain um, iterations until you improve on your accuracy. And finally, you have a trained model. And that trained model will be used on your um, Xcode project to build an app, a machine learning app. So this software um, allows you to create a lot of different types of machine learning models. The first one is uh, image classification. So the image says whether um, it has fountain or a, if it has something else. And second one uh, is like an object detection. So it finds all the objects and it uh, draws a bounding box around that. And, it, and the next one is post detection. So the machine learning, so you can create a, um, a machine learning model to detect your human poses. And the next one is text classifier. So this is basically a sentiment analysis thing. Um, and also you can do processing on sounds as well and create sound classifier model. And other types of um, 
the model law word tagger so let's say you have a sentence you wrap all the sentences together um, and if you, and you can tag each words uh, um, relating to what type of word it is and the next one is activity classifier so this type of classifier actually processes your acceleration and gyro data of your iphone or apple watch and you can create a activity classifier out of that and if you have a raw data of matrices um, then you can use this tabular data and create a tabular classifier so and now we are going to build an image classifier which will um, find whether this so and now we will be building an um, animal classifier so for that um, let's open export my export is already on so in this you can see just go to developer settings and here you can see create ml and the create ml software is on and just create a new project and you just need to pick a template on what you need to create so right now our template is image classifier and our example is going to show whether um, our classifier is going to distinguish between um, lion cheetah and a tiger so i'm just naming it as animal classifier Yeah, and as I told you, you need um, raw data to be fed inside this uh, CreateML software, and that should be converted to a um, core ML model, and that model you'll be using in your mobile application. So there are three types of data that needs. So the first one is the training data, so and second one is the validation data, and third is the testing data. So the entire model is built upon training data. So I'll, before jumping into uh, all these details, I'll just show how this data should be labeled. So these are my data sets. So the root folder will have a lot of subfolders and subfolders represent each, each different classes. So my training data has a different um, can can. OK, my machine learning model can find um, can distinguish between lion, tiger and cheetah. So these are the three classes that can be classified. So on each fold, if, if you open this folder and see, you can see the images of the lion of different lions that are collected. And this you go here and select it over here. Next, coming to validation data. So what happens is on every iteration, um, the training data input is fed to the machine learning algorithms. And the machine learning algorithm will create a dummy model and it will run that dummy model against this validation data. The validation data format is also similar to the training data format. And once this validation data um, is um, the validation data processing is done, um, there will be a score of accuracy, how many percent the accuracy is up to the validation data. So on each iteration, the machine learning model improves its accuracy. So by default, as you see, there's a parameter called uh, maximum iteration. By default, we have set it 25. So which means like, but next 25 times, this machine learning model will be running. So this algorithm will be running um, with this training data and validation data, and it will give you a machine learning model. And once the model is ready, it will automatically test against this testing data. And it gives you accuracy as well. Like, um, this training data, validation data, testing data have different types of images. They, do, they don't have common uh, or same image files. They have different files so that uh, our um, machine learning model is very accurate. And below you can see augmentation, right? So augmentation is if you to improve your accuracy um, in your image classification, um, then you can add um, all these parameters. For example, let's take blur. If you check this blur, um, so this algorithm runs on 24 instances of non-blur objects, as well as it trains itself on um, 24 instances of blurred objects. So what happens is it will, for the first iteration, it will not apply for the blur. On the second time, it will try to apply blur on that. So checking all these things will um, increase your training period and training time, and it will consume a lot of CPUs. 
So right now it's just going to be three classes. So we don't need all these things. So I'm just going to train this. So the training is in progress. Yeah, the training is completed. The testing is also it's done. Great. And as you can see, like um, you can see the metrics, like how best, like um, if you see on the zero titration, um, okay, on the first titration, it was around 35 percentage of the um, it trained. Um, actually, the machine learning model took the training data and uh, it tried to group based upon the class, but the accuracy was only for um, 50 percent. Um, but on the fourth, on the third iteration, it improved to 100 percent. As I told you, at the end of the um, each iteration, it will validate against the validation data. Um, here on the first iteration, it tried to validate against the validation data, but the accuracy was only 25 percent. So the algorithm kept on um, on progress so that uh, to increase the accuracy speed. And then on the fourth iteration, it actually improved, um, like it achieved maximum um, accuracy of 100 percent. And still it kept on going to uh, till thir 13th iteration um, because it had few more um, features to be added and uh, the algorithm needs to run on new different um, sets of data. So on the 13th iteration, like, it has stopped. And um, as you see below, like uh, these metrics are the like these metrics says that the cheetah uh, has a count of five items and uh, it was 100% uh, accurate. Um, and the recall is something um, when you take an image, um, let's say let's take an um, image of cheetah um, and you try to um, send it to a machine learning model and the machine learning model was able to recall all its previous instances on which it has trained. So to be simple, this should be also 100% saying that uh, only then your machine learning model is very accurate. And, and finally, after the model creation, it, um, it has run against the testing data. And, and even there, you can see the um, depression is 100% and the recall is also 100%. And this is the, so from raw data, we have converted it to a machine learning model called .ml model file. So create ML software gives you a um, option to lively test here. So here, just go and add your preview items. So you can lively test without even uh, jumping to the Xcode. So here, my algorithm was able to say, uh, was confident enough to say that this is 100% tiger. And uh, so, but in this case, since my um, machine learning model can find only between cheetah, lion, and tiger, it didn't have any other option. So it, it grouped in such a way that uh, this photo should fall between any of these categories. And it has given me um, a confidence of this level. So when you use this model, it's always, have, it's always a good practice um, to show the output only when they confidence is more than 80%. Yeah, so that's pretty much about um, building a core ML model. And now it's time to use that model in our mobile applications. So for that, um, Apple has a framework called Core ML, which is a common machine learning framework uh, which every app developer uses uh, to build this iOS um, watch app or um, Apple TV apps. Um, so, so this core ML um, framework has APIs to make predictions on the trained machine learning models. And as you see from the image, the core ML framework lies between, um, it lies as a mid tier um, under the all the common frameworks like vision, natural language, speech, and sound analysis. And on the bottom, you can see there are low level frameworks. So the core ML actually, um, it, executes in a sync with, between high level and the low level thing. And core ML, all the processing on core ML happens on neural engine and on the GPU. Only on um, when you work with the matrix data, it happens on the CPU level. And um, as I told, the, the core ML um, it executes on only on the on-device training. So on-device training and prediction. So there is no cloud-based uh, um, the prediction is happening. So core ML is a uh, static framework for now, but in iOS, they have uh, introduced a 
way where core ml can make can download all these trained models from the network itself and can predict it out so now let's jump in um, like uh, let's see how we can build an animal classifier ios app using this uh, machine learning model so for that i have a template project for that so from create ml i'm just dragging and dropping this uh, ml model since already has this um, ml model i'm just uh, skipping that check so if you if you tap on this you can see the machine learning um, the machine learning model information and uh, by default when you have, after drag and drop it automatically creates a class for you uh, so that you can access on the code level and um, and this machine learning model can accept prediction of input um, of image type and it gives you output of all the possible uh, um, all the predictions that's possible um, so this is going to be our dictionary type where the key value will be the the class name and the value will be of the confidence level so before going to code level so this is a sample app that i have built like it's downloaded from the apple website itself so just select it so what happens here is after you select the image um, this image is uh, fed inside this machine learning model file and then uh, this model predicts you the output and as you see um, so this has classified it as tiger of uh, 100 percentage confidence level so now now let's see how the code works so so basically there are three steps uh, so that's happening in this app so first you load the image so, so before that you need to load the machine learning model on your app so that will be the first step and the second step is uh, you select an image and the third step is uh, you you make predictions and display the result so for loading the machine learning model uh, since this is an image classifier we need help of vision framework uh, to work in sync with uh, machine learning um, prediction of that particular image so the vision framework has a wrapper around core ml framework um, and, it, and it has a class called core ml model which actually uh, loads this dot ml model file using this uh, function and after that uh, we need to create a core ml request so this request is used to um, a request uh, so so you create a request and only using this request you can um, ask for um, the machine learning pr the, the predictions so this is um, this is pretty much loading the machine learning thing and uh, and this logic talks about how you select an image and once you select an image um, we are trying to do that uh, classification so this method jumps here and if you see uh, the ui image has been converted into a ci image and uh, vision uh, library also has a uh, to process all these requests that is vn request we have a handler function um, on the vision library itself so and this accepts a ci image with the orientation whether it's land landscape or a um, portrait thing and then it tries to perform prediction so on this line the prediction happens and this happens on this particular request so this request is a vn core ml request so so it goes through this and uh, it, it, it tries to make a request and then um, once the prediction is complete this completion handler will be called and then the result will be passed to this process classifications method and here you are displaying uh, the text over here so this request has a object called results uh, since we are dealing with uh, image classification it has an um, um, object of vn classification observation so and this will have all the probability details like uh, so this is basically the dictionary that i was talking about so this dictionary data and uh, you're doing a map over it and you're printing it to the ui so this is pretty much uh, on how you um, how you how, how you can use a machine learning model uh, to make predictions on your ios app so that's it from my side maybe i'll pass it to where they are yeah th thanks sanjit um guys uh, before i start uh, if you guys have any questions uh, you can post it on the live chat and we'll take it up at the end yeah thank you let me share my screen
Um, so yeah, there is another quick poll for you guys. Uh, so uh, please go to menti.com and use the same code that you used already. And uh, please uh, answer the poll, the quick poll that I have posted there. And in the meantime, I'll Let me just switch back to my uh, keynote. <clears throat> so yeah, um, so uh, what is MLKit actually? MLKit is uh, Google's machine learning kit, uh, which brings these easy to use APIs for mobile developers. Um, so you have to be like uh, creating an account for yourself in the Firebase console. And there are all these easy to use APIs that you can directly integrate them with your application uh, to bring these powerful uh, machine learning APIs and use them uh, in your applications. So uh, initially they were like just four or five uh, APIs and now uh, Google, they, they, work, they continuously work on adding more and more uh, machine learning APIs to these uh, machine learning consoles. So and these APIs are perfectly optimized for mobile. So when you consider mobile, uh, the uh, form of inputs that uh, uh, we usually send from our mobile applications are either photographs and videos or uh, text and uh, voice. So when it, so actually right now, Google has uh, released vision APIs. These APIs that they have released are uh, categorized into vision and natural language processing APIs. So the vision API, APIs have all these uh, image detection, uh, image labeling, text recognition from images and the natural language processing APIs have translate and stuff and so on. Uh, when it comes to pricing, uh, Firebase ML Kit is uh, too generously offering a lot of uh, free data to be uh, transmitted to and fro. Uh, so when it comes to pricing, um, you don't even basically, practically you don't even have to pay any money until it comes, until you get a uh, uh, generous amount of users. So uh, that's one main advantage of using ML Kit. And the other one is uh, ML Kit is not restricted for Android alone. It can be used to develop both Android and uh, iOS apps. <clears throat> so as I was talking, uh, the capabilities that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the capabilities are uh, of Firebase ML Kit, or they have these ready to use APIs that uh, you can just integrate with your uh, applications with just minimal code. And also you can use custom TensorFlow light -like models. So TensorFlow is, uh, an SDK that uh, Google um, has given to the users who would like to do machine learning, where you can like uh, write your own algorithms, supply your own data set, and build your own custom models. And you can use these custom models. You, all you have to do is transform, uh, convert your TensorFlow models into TensorFlow light models, and you have to like, you can bundle them within your app, or you can like host them in the Firebase server and download them in your application when required. And then there is this uh, Auto ML Vision Edge that Firebase gives us which is basically for, uh, I would say for beginners, uh, because so consider I don't have any prior experience to machine learning um, and I don't want to use any APIs or anything, but I have a good data set that I want to supply. So AutoML Vision Edge, so it currently fo uh, focuses only on the vision. So uh, you can use AutoML Vision Edge to do image classification and image labeling. All you have to do is get your data set in a specific format, take that whole zip, uh, upload it to the um, Firebase console, and your model will be trained. You can just set up uh, how long you want your model to be trained and uh, stuff like that. And your model will be ready to use, uh, ready to be used in your mobile applications. And as I was talking earlier, uh, they provide both on-device and uh, Firebase hosted ML models. So <clears throat> people go for uh, uh, different sets based on their requirements. Uh, in case of on-device, uh, all you have to do is uh, bundle the machine learning model or if you're going to use uh, the ready to use APIs that the Firebase offers, um, you can use, there are like two different uh, SDKs that you can integrate in your project, which is one for the on-device models and the other one for uh, uh, using the network to um, communicate between these APIs. So these are the capabilities that Firebase MLKit have. 
let me quickly show you uh, go, uh, like show you how to integrate these apis or like custom models into your application so at first you have to add firebase to your android project so you can add it to both but i'm talking i'm going to be uh, uh, guiding you guys uh, on android projects so all you have to do is create yourself uh, and go to the console uh, firebase console you have to add a project for yourself so you guys can see i have already added a, a project called ocr mobile talk uh, once you go there uh, on the left uh, navigation column you will be able to see all the services that the firebase offers and uh, all you have to do is click on the add app uh, button over here and you will be shown uh, the different uh, platforms that you can add but in, when it comes to machine learning uh, you can add uh, only android and ios uh, you can add the machine learning capability to android and ios alone so all you have to do is click on android over here um, fill in all the details like your package name and the app name and uh, this uh, debug signing certificate sha1 is optional but you can add it for extra layer of security once it is done um, you'll be like registering your uh, app and it will give you a config file uh, this config file will be used by the uh, google services plugin uh, to communicate between the firebase and ensure that it is your app that is uh, uh, communicating with the firebase using your api Sorry about that. <clears throat> and uh, the next step is adding uh, the Firebase SDK uh, to your apps, uh, which is basically the adding the Google Services plugin, and then uh, the dependencies that are required. And the last step would be um, a, a step that uh, is used for the verification alone. Sorry, guys um yeah so the last step would be just to run the app for verifying installation you can just skip this step uh, if not required actually uh, and once you are done with all these now we have to like uh, enable machine learning um for our project so you can see our app is added over here i have already added two android apps here so these two android apps will be able to communicate with my api key with the config file that i was talking about earlier uh, to the firebase console so all you have to do is go to the machine learning tab uh, from the navigator uh, uh, column. And here you can see, you will be able to see three columns, namely APIs, custom, and auto ML. So as I was telling earlier, APIs is the ready to use APIs that you're, you're going to integrate with your mobile app. And custom is where you'll be hosting your custom models that you built using TensorFlow. And auto ML vision edge is uh, where you will supply just your data sets for uh, them to automatically train your models. So let's move on to this. So here you see this filter which shows on-device processing and cloud processing. So few APIs uh, are available on both on-device processing and cloud processing, and few APIs are available only to, through cloud processing. So you have to have your uh, uh, internet connection to access on cloud processing APIs. Uh, so when you click on the Get Started here, it will give you two options, uh, which is one is uh, the on-device running one, uh, and the other one is uh, via cloud. So when if you want to enable the uh, uh, cloud APIs, you have to make sure that your app uh, uses internet to communicate with these APIs, and also uh, uh, enable the cloud API usage button, the toggle that you see at the top here. <clears throat> so you can already see that uh, I have like enabled the text recognition uh, API for my app over here. So this is all that you have to do with the, on the Firebase side. So let's move on to integrating these Firebase APIs to your Android app. Let me quickly share my uh, studio to show you just the code snippets on how uh, uh, simple the coding would be. So when it comes to coding, all you have to do is, um, first, the first thing would be to add the required dependencies. So in our case, uh, I have added both the uh, on-device processing SDK that is required and also the one that will be using uh, the cloud uh, APIs. So all that you have to do is, uh, the, the coding part will be pretty uh, straightforward. All you have to do is uh, convert your input uh, into the input object that the APIs is, uh, API is expecting and uh, process 
um, the, the run the API task and get the output. Um, and you'll be able to like use this API in your mobile app. So I, al I also have a demo of uh, how this application works. So let me show you guys that. So this is the demo of uh, text recognition APIs using the, fi using the Firebase APIs. So if you see here, this is a pretty simple app which loads a picture from your gallery. Um, and when you choose a picture with the text, it is going to um, connect with the API and uh, it will give you the text that is uh, present in the particular image. It will read the text that is in the image and it will also give you these bounds uh, actually. Uh, the bounds are basically like uh, the areas from which the text have been uh, detected, the block of texts have been detected. So you can, if you, even if you want to like draw blocks and everything around your uh, uh, image to show that this particular text was taken from this particular part, you will be able to do that. <clears throat> so, so I was talking about uh, using these uh, on cl the cloud APIs and the on-device APIs based on your uh, requirement. So when do people go for cloud and uh, uh, the device, uh, the cloud-based and the on-device-based APIs is? Uh, when you consider that uh, uh, the current model is enough, uh, is pretty enough for you to determine, uh, uh, like read your uh, changes and everything. Like it's enough for you to release your application. That's when you have to opt for the uh, on-device model. And if you feel like uh, it would require the regular updates from this model, uh, because they continually continually work on increasing the accuracy of these models. So if you feel like you need this uh, uh, accuracy that is being improved every day, uh, you have to opt for the uh, Firebase APIs, the cloud APIs actually. So this is all about integrating the Firebase APIs to your application. So now let's move on to integrating, uh, integrating these custom TensorFlow models that you build and uh, into your applications. So TensorFlow, as I was telling, it's a um, service offered by Google to uh, for machine learning developers to write their own algorithms. Um, so as you can see here, uh, this image underscore model is something that I have uh, built uh, using a small, very small data set, which uh, uh, which which uh, like if uh, uh, it, which finds out uh, images actually, identifies images in an object, identify objects in images. Um, uh, like it, it's a very small model. It uh, finds out only quite a few uh, objects in images. So all you have to do is to integrate these custom models into your app. Uh, there is this interpreter in TensorFlow, which is available on both the Android uh, as SDK and also on the TensorFlow. You have to determine the input and output that your model will be taking. So in our case, uh, the above code snippet that I have shown you determines the input that the model takes and the type of input, and also prints out the output, as you can see at the image at the bottom. Uh, so it takes one, two, two, four, two, two, four, three, um, and it takes UA int eight, which is basically a byte buffer. So what this means is it takes one image uh, with two uh, of size 224 into 224, a byte buffer, one byte buffer of two, the corresponding size, with three R, three channels, which are basically R, G, and B. And it prints out probabilities of one byte buffer of 1,001 objects that it can detect from the images uh, and the probabilities of each object that it ca that can be contained in that uh, uh, image that we are supplying to the model. So <clears throat> before moving on to the demo, I'll show you guys um, the code snippet uh, of how to integrate this with your uh, application. So for this to be done, all you have to do is, uh, you, as I was talking, you have to use this, uh, include this interpreter SDK to your Android app. And uh, when it comes to the coding part, um, so consider you have hosted your custom model um, in the Firebase. And you also have a local model in your bundle uh, to ensure that whenever the user is uh, user doesn't have an active internet connection, uh, you will use you will be using the local model as a uh, uh, fallback. <clears throat> so why go for, so in the similar case why go for a cloud hosted uh, model versus uh, on-device hosted model? 
So when you go for the cloud hosted model, consider you'll be like improving your models uh, day by day. Uh, all you have to do is just host your model again in the Firebase and make sure your app downloads the latest model from the Firebase. And it can just simply, you don't have to update your application every time in the Play Store, but consider you have only the uh, on-device bundled uh, uh, model within your application. You have to like give an update to your app whenever uh, you in improve the efficiency of your model. So the code is pretty simple and straightforward. All you have to do is create an object for the Firebase uh, custom remote model, download it from the Firebase hosted server, and uh, using the downloaded model file, just convert it into an interpreter object. And similarly, if you are hosting, uh, if you have bundled it locally, all you have to do is read it from the uh, asserts and just convert it to a buffer and uh, use the same buffer uh, in the local interpreter. And when it comes to the input and output, as I was telling you guys earlier, you have to determine the input and the output that your input that your out in model takes and the output that it is going to produce. So the as I was as you if you remember, I showed you the similar numbers um, of, from the uh, uh, note uh, from the keynote. So I'll create I'll be creating a byte buffer of the same size, and I'll be like using that byte buffer as an input, and I'll be populating it with the RGB uh, pixels of the bitmap that I'm going to supply to the model. And I'll be creating an output buffer with the exact size that my model is going to uh, return. This will throw an exception if you if the input and output sizes are differing from what the model will be uh, producing. So all you have to do is just create the input and output buffers, populate your input buffer, just run with the input, just run with run them with the interpreter, and your interpreter will run these on the uh, your own uh, custom model, and it is going to give you the outputs. So I'll show you guys a demo of uh, how this works. <clears throat> yeah. So here, uh, as I was telling, um, this is going to uh, determine objects that are present in images. So I'll be supplying a few images to this model. And as you can see, the results are pretty fast, actually. Uh, it is because the demo that I have recorded here is from the uh, local model that is bundled. So that is another advantage of having a local model, uh, which is basically, uh, so in, in case of custom models, it is always going to be local. But when it comes to the APIs that you use from Firebase, uh, so that is another advantage of uh, going to the uh, cloud-based APIs and the on-device ones. The on-device ones are pretty faster compared to the cloud-based ones. And it also depends on the latency of the user's networks. So this is all about uh, integrating the custom models to your Android application. And the other thing that I was talking about earlier is the AutoML. So AutoML, as I was talking, um, it is used to train your uh, image labeling models. Um, so all you have to do is go to the Firebase console and uh, use this uh, AutoML to upload your data set. So go to the AutoML tab, uh, click on the Add Data Set, give your uh, data set a, a name, create your data set, and just upload the data in this particular format. This is what uh, the only thing that you have to uh, keep in mind. Zip these images in the folder, uh, in the file, such that uh, the images that you want to be labeled under uh, each name uh, or within that particular folders. So that's the most important thing uh, that you have to consider before uploading your uh, uh, data set to the models here. <clears throat> so I'm not, uh, the, the video doesn't show you like how to upload and because it takes time. So all you have to do is upload your data set, set some computing hours to train your model. And uh, once your model is uh, done training, you can uh, use the trained model. You can either host them in the Firebase or you can download the models bundle them in your app or do whatever you want to do with the model. So here, this is a model that I have built with uh, 50 images of total. So I have like uploaded 10 images in each category and uh, with a total of 50 images. And I set my budget as two hours, two compute hours to train my model. So there's something else I want to show you guys. You can even test your model directly from here. Uh, this is something that I want to show you guys. So this table shows how your model uh, classified each label uh, correctly or incorrectly. So what I did is I like con I, 
I put in similar images in all these folders and, uh, and also very less images actually. So I just uploaded 50 images. 10 is actually the base count for each label set. So I just uh, uploaded five label sets and I just uploaded 10 images and I mixed those images as well. You can see here, Daisy is pretty clean actually. So it was able to 100% time correctly label Daisy from the images. But when it comes to the other labels, uh, other labels were also labeled as Daisy all the 100% time. So what this graph means is, so this graph gives you an idea of uh, how your model is working right now, whether you need to upload more data set or uh, you need more computational hours or something like that. So this model explains you that clearly. So in my case, uh, the roses and dandelion, the other flowers were like not labeled or not predicted properly. So I have to like replace my data set with a proper one and also provide more compute hours to my model to train. Um, I guess that's it from the auto ML vision edge. So what's new in MLKit and what uh, what we can expect in future is uh, there is continued support uh, from the Firebase community to ensure that new APIs are being released regularly. So as I was telling you earlier, when the beta came out, uh, there were only four or five APIs in MLKit and uh, currently there are more than uh, uh, 10 to 12 APIs that are available to be used in your app and also quality enhancements. They continuously keep training these models uh, every day to make sure uh, <clears throat> these uh, models or these, these APIs that we use and the models that we use are able to uh, work uh, efficient enough uh, from the user's perspectives. And also there is this early access program. Uh, all you have to do is fill out a Google form and you will be able to access the APIs even before they are rolled out in live. So actually post detection API in uh, MLKit was actually available in early access program like few months back and now it is available in live. And currently there is another new API called entity extraction which is available only in the early access program. So if you want to like get your hands on even before it's coming out in live, all you have to do is enroll yourself in the early access program and uh, you can get to play with all these APIs even before they are released online. So for coming back to the entity extraction API, it is basically like extracting entities like phone numbers, addresses and stuff uh, from the text that you supply to these APIs. So it's so th th this is what MLKit is doing. So we can keep on expecting uh, lots of new APIs and stuff from them and also quality enhancements. Um, so how about MLKit, like how efficient it is? So consider for, uh, when, when it comes to natural language processing APIs, the translate API that uh, Google has provided via Firebase is exactly the model that is being used by the Google Translate app in offline mode. So uh, you can comparatively see how, quali how qualified these models are to be used by uh, developers who wants to use a translate option in their own apps itself. So it is pretty uh, cool while using MLKit. So I've been talking about MLKit and TensorFlow Lite models and stuff like that. So are, is this the only way that machine learning capabilities can be brought onto Android applications? Certainly not. Um, what developers do is, what uh, traditionally developers do is, they train their ML models, post them as APIs, and uh, uh, send the data and uh, get them uh, get the data results back. Uh, where, like that's that's another way where you can use. Uh, machine learn where you can bring the machine learning capabilities to the uh, Android applications. And also there are like other uh, uh, consoles available, other uh, services available to um, enable uh, machine learning to the Android users. So that's all I had uh, from my side. Um, over to you, Sanjit. Thank you. Yeah, so let's see what's new in iOS. So in iOS 14, um, so before iOS 14, uh, you need to ship your Xcode, um, your iOS app with the ML model file. And for every update um, of ML model, you need to release a new version. So with iOS 14, they have introduced uh, a, new a new way where uh, um, you can upload, so on the first, Cut, you need to ship your ML model file with the app with the project to the app store and for the second update all you just so uh, Apple has a portal where you can uh, go and upload your 
new model files over there. So the app automatically gets the ML model file alone updated rather than the app um, getting directly updated. So it's like a dynamic approach that um, um, Apple developers right now uh, started using it. Um, and other than that, um, um, iOS 14 gives you a, be a better model encryption um, and a safety since you're uploading um, your machine learning model to the cloud and downloading it down. And uh, with iOS 14 and with the latest, um, the macOS version, the CreateML software has become, uh, has, has improved a lot and CPU time has been reduced and the training times has been reduced and the training has become more faster. And the prediction has also improved on the core ML framework. Um, and with iOS 14, um, the new different classifiers are also introduced. Um, on the previous slide, I showed you, um, I, I have shown you that uh, post detection, right? So um, they introduced the post detection with iOS 14, and they were also introduced hand post detection as well um, in iOS 14. So that's pretty much update on um, what's new in iOS. I think uh, we can answer um, the YouTube questions. Yeah, so Arif has asked, uh, um, what is the deployment target for iOS to use these ML frameworks? So Core ML um, has a deployment target from um, from la iOS 11. So all apps from iOS 11 can has Core ML framework, and they can make use of this power. Um, uh, of the machine learning, is it feasible to support older version? There is, um, we can't. The core ML doesn't support uh, targets less than uh, iOS 11. And Balachandra has asked um, on-device training. Does it mean Sanjit said on-device training in iOS? Does that mean no input is passed to the cloud, and maybe a trained model can be passed in the cloud? Can you give an example for that? So, Bala, what happens is, as I told, on the first app update, you need to ship the static model with the to the app store and if you have a new update to the mo ml model you need to directly upload to the ml portal so that directly um, will be pushed to the user's application so it's like a dynamic thing and the, and there is um, and there is no on device training on your mobile phones the the training happens only on the mac systems using the create ml software um, so what happens on the phone is actually the, the prediction happens using the train model. You give some input and the, it tries to predict using that model. So that's what happens on your device actually. Um, yeah, it will take a lot of uh, time, um, a, a lot of CPU usage to train a model on your Mac. Um, but as I told with, um, with, with the latest Mac OS, uh, these times have been drastically reduced. Um, and training a model on a cloud, um, Apple has, has right now has not explored any kind of possibilities. So as Irde was saying, we can try with uh, the Firebase training, which happens actually on the cloud. And then even for the Firebase will like export it, will export a model in the format of ML model file that can be used in your Xcode project. And then last question is, uh, is it possible to dynamically update the ML model alone without an app update? Yes, Bala, it is possible. So as I told you, um, Apple has a website where you can go and upload your latest models, uh, ML models. And on the next launch of the app, um, it automatically downloads and the users will consume your um, the latest uh, trained ML model that's been uploaded to your, uploaded to your cloud. Yeah. Over to Irdaya. Thank you, guys. Um, yeah, thanks, Sanjit. Uh, is there any questions on Android? If not, uh, is there anything I can take them up?
Um, yeah, Sebastian has asked, can we use Google Colab to train the model and then import the model? Uh, right now, it is uh, not supported uh, uh, via the Firebase interpreter. So the, as I was talking, the interpreter and the SDK that is being used by the Android uh, is provided by the TensorFlow. So you have to like train your model with uh, TensorFlow, and uh, you can import the model for usage in uh, your Android application. Okay, there is another question um, from Ari. How expensive is it to train your model on the cloud? Um, so as I was telling earlier, the pricing is pretty cheap when um, it comes to Firebase. So consider, uh, uh, let me talk about the pricing for usage of the APIs first. So the APIs for the first thousand hits that you give, uh, you, that you give to the APIs are pretty free actually. So when it comes to on-device, you will not be charged at all. You are totally using it free of cost. Uh, but uh, consider you are using the Firebase APIs, or you'll be charged. You'll be charged only after the thousand APIs, and even after thousand thousand APIs, uh, for each the, for the next thousand APIs, the cost is pretty low. So for each thousand APIs, you'll be charged only one point five dollars uh, for the next thousand APIs. So that is how the APIs are uh, cost, and uh, the hours to train. Um, I would say it depends on the, the data set that you supply. So consider you supply a very minimal data set of identifying only, uh, for an example, let's take, uh, you're going to identify only two uh, uh, animals, same cat and dog. So you don't need much uh, training hours too. So, uh, so the ideal training time would be like uh, two or four hours would be pretty much more than enough uh, if you have the correct uh, data set and images. But say you have uh, lots of labels and lots of images that needs to be trained. So it depends on the amount of data that you're supplying uh, uh, to be trained. So, yeah. There are no more questions. I think we can wrap it up. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess there is a question. Which types of reinforcement learning are supported in TensorFlow? Um, TensorFlow, uh, actually, uh, it supports um, um, mostly like all the learning methods actually. So TensorFlow is basically like an advanced uh, SDK that you can use to uh, uh, train your machine learning models. And any machine learning model that you build using TensorFlow can be converted to light models and can be used for uh, mobile application deployments as well. Um, so if you want to use TensorFlow, I would say uh, it requires a separate uh, amount of uh, uh, expertise in machine learning and stuff. So, but yeah, um, you can use all types of learning if you are familiar with the algorithms that you want to use. Uh, since there are no more questions, I think it's time to like, we'll wrap it up. Uh, thanks, Hirdeya and Sanjit for this uh, excellent uh, presentation on how to use machine learning on our mobile app.
so don't forget to follow uh, follow us on twitter and also uh, join the uh, mobile talk whatsapp group to uh, keep up to date on uh, all the events that will be happening as part of mobile talk yeah. thank you everyone and have a nice evening